Rock on Rockies and Reds fans. Welcome into an exciting Locked on crossover episode. Thank you for making Locked on Rockies or Reds your first listen every day. We are free and available on every platform. We're also brought to you today by our friends at rockauto.com. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. I am joined today by the one, the only Jeff Carr of Locked On Reds. Jeff, how's it going? Paul, it's good to be talking to you, man. Uh, Doing pretty good. The weather has started to cool down a little bit here in Ohio, so I got sweatpants on instead of sweat shorts, so it's nice. I'm a man, a man who appreciates both the sweatpant and the sweat shorts as well. I'm a year round sweat shorts when I can sweatpants in that when, when you can't, I, they're the best short, uh, except yes. I will say need more consistent pockets. I have too many issues where my things fall out of my pockets. Yeah. They, they either build big enough pockets for like a key or they build pockets that go down to your knee. It's mm-hmm. really weird. But um, luckily, I've I've had a couple with zippers, so that's been one of the the nice Fancy. kind of things that are going. I'm, I'm actually rocking a more of a towel, a, a pants made of a towel nice. consistency right now for 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 my shorts. But uh, <laughs> it's beautiful here in the Pacific Northwest in fall. It's cool. It's nice. Um, the football is not so nice here, but it's real nice there in Cincinnati, Ohio, right now. Bearcats <sighs> are what number three now, maybe higher after this weekend. Number two because Iowa just two. got beat, right? At least in the AP, we we yeah. only look at the poll where the Bearcats are the highest, and they're cool. the highest in the AP. The coaches' poll still has them in number three, but yeah, since Iowa uh, Iowa in the AP dropped all the way down to number eleven, but yeah, it's it's nice that football is kind of picking up where baseball really dropped the ball because I've never seen I've never experienced a football season quite like this where both the Bengals and the Bearcats are winning. This yeah. is awesome. <laughs> yeah, Bengals are good. Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. That's a great combo. Great for my fantasy team. I had my eyes on Jamar Chase all day. When Joe Burrow says he has a favorite target, I'm going to go ahead and say smart deal to get that target on your team. And it's been working out uh, really, really great. But I completely feel you, Jeff, though. The football started great and unfortunately kind of exposed what I think a lot of people really thought about the Broncos anyway. Those teams that they beat in the beginning of the year, you should beat. And But I will say, I think the Broncos should have beat the Steelers and I thought I was expecting a much better performance from them yesterday against a, a Raiders team that has been dealing with uh, quite an interesting week in terms of uh, ownership and things like that. I know there was that whole speculation of, well, maybe Gruden was actually holding the Raiders back and they'll show us one way or the other this week. I don't know if we if we know that to be true, but yeah, it's it's interesting to see how the Broncos go. And I, I think they'll probably make an adjustment. I think it's one of those where they did pretty well for the first three games and then people got film and figured out how to adjust accordingly to them and, and mm-hmm. they're going to make their own adjustment now. It's really the defense that's been the big disappointment for me so far. They were supposed to be the big the big piece of the team. Teddy Bridgewater, although not incredible, didn't look amazing yesterday, especially in terms of turnovers, has really, you know, he really kept the turnovers down for most of the year and it's been good. But there's your locked on baseball host perspective on some uh, football. I mean, I think most Colorado sports fans, honestly, are more excited for the Nuggets and the Abs uh, going forward because those two teams are the teams to be watching in terms of Colorado. But let's talk baseball and let's talk specifically yeah. some Reds and Rockies baseball. And let's start. Let's start with the September's because you mentioned, you know, with the way baseball season ended in Cincinnati, not so great. There's a lot of storylines there, though. I think Cincinnati did underperform down the stretch. But how the heck are you supposed to keep up with St. Louis? What the heck's going on there? That was the thing. It's like if there's any silver lining, it's that it took a Herculean effort from the team that actually made the playoffs. It just sucks that it was St. Louis. Like all Reds fans looked at this and was like, you know what? We we want a do over. And if we can't make it, then we want the Padres to make it because what the heck? We don't want St. Louis to do that. They had, I believe, it was their longest winning streak ever in franchise yeah. history, and they're pretty old. So mm-hmm. it's not like saying this is the first time they've done it since like you always hear those stats like this is the first time this has happened since 2018 you're like three years that's it yeah (laughs) in in the terms of baseball that's like a day come on right but yeah and the whole career or in the whole franchise history of the cardinals that that win streak but on the other side it was like I've heard some people try to console me a little bit and say, well, they were kind of out over their skis for most of the season. They were playing way above their, their projections and things like that. And I'm like, I hear you, but 
uh, whenever that kind of happened, we saw some things that changed our expectations. And, and this was the period of time that ownership had basically told us like, wait, we're going to be competitive. Wait, you know, endure through 2014 through 2019. And then we're going to have some good competitive teams. So this was right there, smack dab in the middle of when we thought we were getting competitive baseball and to see it just flatline so much in September, it was like, Ooh, it, it was a beat down for Reds country. And, and we're still kind of picking up the pieces as we look ahead to this off season. Cause you know, one of the things I think uh, it might be an interesting parallel is teams that have been saying the competitive is coming. The competitive is coming. And while the Reds might've overperformed at some point in the season, when you look at the Seattle Mariners, a team that took, you know, overperformed all year and was in it literally until game 162 in the, I think it was the eighth inning that the Red Sox had finally won and and, and eliminated them. And and the I was working that game with the radio team uh, in, in, in Seattle, and they were already down 7-2 at that point. Shohei comes up and hits a home run. And the most Mariners thing ever, Shohei Otani leads the game off in the biggest game in a decade with a home run, and it's just like, oh, come on. But anyway, you know, Seattle's got to be sitting here, and, and everyone here is sitting here like, you know what? This season was great still. We didn't quite. We didn't break the curse yet, but 90 wins. I mean, you got to be excited and, and Seattle's got to be sitting there being excited. Well, I feel like Reds can look at Seattle and kind of point a little bit and be like, you know, what's going on over there? Why isn't it? Tra-? It doesn't it's not, you know, the same thing, but I still think there's some parallels that you can make between those two teams. Seattle's a good one, and I hadn't really thought about making that parallel just yet because the one parallel that I really wanted, and it it's not a parallel as to what happened, it's a parallel to what should happen is Atlanta. Atlanta came into the trade deadline with a losing record, and they weren't even in the playoff hunt. I mean, they were in the playoff hunt, but they were kind of far back at that point. But they saw the opportunity in L East and they went all in and they went and they got the guys despite missing their alpha in Acuna. And wow, I didn't even plan that one. Alpha Acuna. That should be his nickname. Uh, there you go. Anyway. I think you're on to something. Alpha Acuna. Um, but thinking of teams like that, and then speaking of out over their skis, the Giants, like they were supposed to win 77 games, and then they went 107. Like, come on. So I get it from a perspective of, yeah, maybe you can chill out a little bit, but <sighs> I just don't want to, Paul. <laughs> Well, and and perfect opportunities for and and you know let's highlight a little conversation here. You know, if the Reds did kind of a Braves mindset, there's an argument to be made. There's a storyline where Trevor Story and John Gray are Cincinnati Red for the second half of of 2021, in something that's considered a a, a playoff push. I mean, Trevor Story was sitting there waiting, probably to be traded to anybody at that point. John Gray, while he wanted to stay in Colorado, I mean, they haven't gotten the deal done. So looking at this, like John Gray and the Rockies, they were supposed to be the one big free agent that, that was coming this offseason that the Rockies that I was expecting a contract on after his last start, no matter or before his last start. Here's his contract. Here's what you know, we love him. John Gray still isn't signed with the Rockies right now. And 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 because you know, but I gotta tell you. I, I was sleeping on the Braves. I did not expect them yeah. to be in the position. they. I didn't expect them to be here and let alone up two to nothing. But, but I got to say, Jeff, I have no issues with them having home field advantage. That Them's the rules. I mean, that, that it's yep. I mean, sorry, L.A., the Dodgers like you've had to deal with what everyone else has had to deal with playing against you in the playoffs for eight years. <laughs> uh, it's. I mean, that's it's just kind of the way I feel about it. I'm sorry that the Giants, that there was another 100-win team in the NL West. That's I don't feel that, bad for the Dodgers <laughs> at all. That's the one thing. Like I, I respect the way that the wild card is set up, whether it's one game or a series, that's debatable for the future. But when you look at the fact that a team is a wild card team because they don't win the division, that puts a premium on the regular season. And I don't want to see that premium removed. So I like that. That's where we are with the Braves Dodger series and the Braves, man, they were the longest odds to win the world series. And now they're in the driver's seat to even get to that big dance, let alone be so far out of it that people aren't even counting them in. I mean, their pitching has been absolutely amazing in the postseason, And that's something that Reds fans can speak to because they shut the Reds out for 22 innings last year, but they have done absolutely everything that they need to. And the lineup continues to do the whole pesky thing like everybody keeps talking about it so this isn't a 
this isn't a very unique point of view when it comes to the Atlanta Braves, but it doesn't matter who's on the mound. They are making that dude work. And mm-hmm. whether you're Max Scherzer or whether you're facing the last dude off the bullpen for the Dodgers, that is always going to be a problem. And it just shows, I mean, uh, you know, even though it, it hasn't worked out, that depth of the Dodgers is so dangerous, but it, it's just playoff baseball. I mean, these are the best. The Dodgers have some of the, you know, the best pitchers we've ever seen in in across starters into bullpens. And, you know, they're still doing it. And that play last night, that's just that's literally the definition of hit the ball hard and play. Good things will happen. Boom. Hard enough. Right up the middle. Hits hard enough. It ricochets and goes off. Boom. You're up to nothing in in uh, the NLCS. Uh, it's it, it's a great series. Uh, and honestly, again, just going to keep playing my little tiny violin for Dodgers fans as I'm sitting here <laughs> as the host of the Rockies. But we got lots more to talk about. I want to talk to you some more about some great or for, about some uh, playoff teams <clears throat> from your division. But first, let me tell you about our friends at Rock Auto. With the ever increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Folks, it's 2021. We we also saw throughout last year, you don't need to go to the store and go to the counter and have the person just look things up on the computer for you. You have a computer, you have a phone, you have access to rockauto.com at your home, at your home and in your pocket and you can you can save up to 30%, 50% or 100% more for the same parts from those chain stores or car dealerships. Save your time and money when using Rock Auto. It's a family business. It's serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years and their prices are reliably low for every customer. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Just got me a turn signal from rockauto.com. It's like I, I always used to go down to the store on the corner and you like walking around looking for the numbers like rock auto. You literally put in what your car is and they'll pull it. There you go. This is the one you need. I'm like, okay, thanks. Let's get that. With cars, then, you gotta have, it's got to be specific. You got to have the right thing. I got to actually go look at some stuff. I've had some terrible car. I actually just got sideswiped in, in, while I was parked the other day and they punched a nice. hole in the back part of my tail, you know, the cover. I got to scrape. So I got to go hit a rock auto and, and for, for all my damage needs or I hope <laughs> my car is a mess. I need a new car at the end of the day. That's really what I need to be looking for. But uh, Jeff here, we're talking uh, you know, a little crossover fun, little off season stuff. Yeah. Two teams, uh, Cincinnati near and dear to my heart. Lots of ties, maybe for your Reds fans out there. Proud Ohio university alum right here. Athens, a uh, big Bobcats. Bobcat fan. Bobcats finally winning some football as well, even though the post Frank Solich era has not been kind uh, to them yeah. there. But uh, Jeff, my question for you here. The, uh, you know, the Reds saw two teams in their division go to the playoffs this year, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Milwaukee Brewers. Nolan Arenado comes out and says he's staying. There's Because I, I will say, until the Cardinals went on that run, I did have in the back of my mind an absolute nightmare scenario of Nolan Arenado opting out and becoming a, a, a Dodger, in which I really would have had a, a rough time uh, watching baseball. Uh, but he stays there, he proves that he's great. He hits incredible with, with not being at Coors Field. He's great in the field. Uh, but I, I got to ask, with, are you more worried about kind of the old vet run St. Louis Cardinals that showed that they have just this history of good baseball players that have been good for like a two decades now and they can and they can make it rest? Or are you scared of the of the three headed dragon pitching of of the Brewers who can't seem to figure it out in the postseason, though? That is the interesting thing is that when they get to October, it seems like Milwaukee forgets what got them there. And that's why Except they're always they play in Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I still think it's Milwaukee. Like the thing with St. Louis is they're always pesky. They are a well-run organization from top to bottom, whether you're looking at the single A team all up to major leagues. And I know that there's that whole stupid thing, the Cardinal way and blah, blah, blah. I hate that. It's the most annoying thing ever. And I think any baseball fan outside of St. Louis hates that term, but um, they know how to keep a relatively safe contending bet on the field. Like we're talking about a team that even in their worst of years is barely under 500. You're never going to see a Cardinals team flirt with a hundred losses. Like, I just don't know that that will ever happen. They just are so good at keeping everything loaded and ready for the future as well as contending for the present. So I I think that they're always going to be there, but Milwaukee just looks like the class of the division right now. They've built 
an amazing pitching staff, whether you're looking at the starting rotation or the bullpen, because Freddie Peralta was a dude who I remember a couple of years ago, whenever the Reds would face him, I'd be like, great, this dude, he doesn't throw strikes at all. We're going to have a nice game. And that was the case. But then he figured out how to throw strikes. And now he's a really good pitcher. And you put him on top of Woodruff and Burns, which are just two ridiculous Cy Young contenders year in and year out. Uh, we For the last couple of years, Reds fans have been really happy with Luis Castillo and Sonny Gray at the top, but they're nowhere near as good as Burns and Woodruff right now. They're mm-hmm. those do those dudes are consistent every night. And then you go to that bullpen, which I mean, I don't know that Devin Williams was the reason that the Brewers weren't good in that series, but yeah. the fact that he breaks every bone in his hand in a celebration doesn't help the Brewers in the in the postseason. But when you look at him leading into Josh Hader, and then you've got this conglomeration of dudes who are also good at relief pitching and Boxberger and Aaron Ashby, and you've got the long guys and Lauer and Suter. It's just, it's such a fool pitching staff that you don't have to have a world beating lineup to win a game. You just got to score three or four runs and they've been pretty good at doing that. And Oh, by the way, they made the best trade. I, I still think looking back on this season for any team in baseball, the best trade that was made was them getting Willie Adamas from the Rigs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but the big question, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating because that is a classic thing. I, and, and but I, I will say you gotta, it's a clear, it's a clear, example of the risk that the brewers do run that you got to be scoring the playoffs against the best and you know your your pitching staff can keep you in close games it can keep you there but if you're not scoring at all i mean obviously i mean it all it takes is one run off a of, you know a pro a pro batter is going to get one run off a, off a pro batter uh you know whatever that i, I, I totally I messed that up but you know <laughs> rymel tapia six home runs this year Two of them, DeGrom and Scherzer. So, I mean, that just shows you the example of like anyone can run into one and and that changes everything. And offense is important. And and that kind of leads me to my next question is what's going to happen with Christian Yelich? I mean, if he he's the big question mark, because I feel like if he was going off that, you know, with with Nolan coming into St. Louis, he was kind of kind of bring to, you know, with that. Ri- I feel like maybe a little rivalry between those two players is kind of what we've seen. Those two be elite of the elite. It, it, but. Christian Yelich, I mean, not not just falling off. I mean, hitting you know, plummeting to earth rapidly and hard. Like I, it's crazy. I wonder if it's not like a underlying nagging injury, like not something that yeah. a, a doctor is going to like say, no, you can't play with this. Like he he obviously was healthy enough to play, but I feel like there was something that was affecting his swing because he still had that ability. He still had the plate discipline and the ability to get on base. It's just when he swung the bat, he, he wasn't doing much damage. And that's definitely not the Yelich that we know because looking around this division, it was like between Yelich and Suarez, like who was having the worst year. And then Suarez at least had a nice last month of the season. But when I think about Yelich, I think he's probably going to bounce back. It's probably something that the off season will heal, whatever it is. And he's going to be just fine next year because he, that is their dude in the middle of the lineup, like say what you will about some of the guys that they brought in, even Adamas. Like it was cool that Adamas stepped up when they needed him to, but that's not the guy that they're relying on next year. He's going to be the compliment to Christian Yelich and they need Yelich back. If they're going to be the class of the national league, they're the class of the NL central, but if they're going to be the class of the national league, they need Christian Yelich back. And I think he bounces back because I think that the bit that I got to see him like against the Reds and things like that, it's just, it seems like he's just a little bit off, like a tweak here will probably be all he needs. And it's crazy how much that, that is definitely a baseball thing too. Just something, just a little strain that you couldn't get right all year that when you twist, you can't get that full torque when you're swinging. It's all that small stuff is it. And in a player like Christian Relich, it it probably does just take something uh, minuscule and to, to fix it. Speaking of fixing things, the off season is here. What are you hoping for from, from the reds? And are there some Rockies that you're that you're looking at that you're hoping that the Red that, that you'd like the Reds to to take a little bit of a little bit of a flyer on? It's interesting because I know that we're really going to get into this conversation a little bit later on. But the number one thing that I want the Reds to do is simply keep Nick Castellanos. I think if you do that, a lot of other stuff falls into place. But if you don't do that, then you've got a huge hole in the outfield that you got to figure out how you're going to fill that. Plus, you still have a bullpen that. 
maybe you don't have to completely rebuild because I feel like they have some talented middle relief guys, some talented sixth, seventh, eighth inning guys. They just don't have that hammer. They don't have the the bullpen ace. I'm, I'm hesitant to say the word closer because David Bell, his philosophy with running a bullpen, he doesn't like thinking of a guy as simply the ninth inning guy. He thinks of the guy as, I want that dude that if the bases are loaded in the sixth and I need one out, I have this one dude that I know I can count on for that one out, and then we'll build out the rest of the game. They don't have that guy right now, but they could go get that guy. And I think that other than keeping Nick Castellanos, that should be their number one priority because they've got guys coming up through the farm system who are going to be in the starting rotation next year. They've got Jose Barrero, who by all rights, it should be his job to lose the shortstop position for next season. It, it, it was widely understood that he wasn't quite ready to take the reins this past year. So next year should be the thing. And that was the one the one idea with uh, like maybe looking at a Trevor story is that they would have been okay with him only playing this year. The problem was their valuation for a trade is they were literally trading for him for this year. And the Rockies were looking for a lot more than that. So I think that's why the Reds never really synced up and made that deal. Well, it would have been awesome. I, I would have loved to have seen that. But when I, when I look at the Rockies, I mean, story would be interesting. Um, but the thing is, the infield is just so cluttered. Like, second base is spoken for. Jonathan India is the Reds' second baseman for yeah. the foreseeable future. Like, he's going to win Great. the NL Rookie of the Year. Yeah, a, amazing rookie of the uh, rookie year. And uh, Joey Votto is still here for a couple of years. With the DH, he'll probably split some time at first base and playing DH. But then third base is a Eugenio Suarez in my if, if I were running things, say Eugenio Suarez, and then you just kind of figure out where the where the crap you got to put Moustakis because he had a rough year and uh, he was hurt for 85 games. Ooh. And in the games that he played, he hit 206 and he hit six bombs. Like, oof, that's not yeah. that's not the moose that they're paying for. And they're paying 38 million over the next two years for it. Right. So it's it, it's rough days ahead when we're looking at how the Reds are going to utilize him. So. They've got to figure out a way to move that money if they're going to get another big money guy. And I think Story's probably out of their price range at this point. But, I mean, if I were looking at some guys, I mean, we were pretty happy with Michael Givens. Uh, he's obviously Yeah, that's right. The- that's actually right. The, the, the Michael yeah. Givens did the, the one trade uh, at the deadline for the Rockies. Michael Givens to the, uh, to the Reds. And who did the Reds send back for that one? <laughs> Great question. I don't remember. I am, so that, uh, I'm searching, <laughs> I'm searching, I'm searching. But but losing him, like that's a dude out of the bullpen that I don't necessarily think he should be considered the bullpen hammer for them, but would have been a nice, would be a nice guy to bring back depending on how much it would cost. Well, I think it's probably going to cost around the same much, the same money that the Reds said no to Archie Bradley for last season. So they're probably not bringing him back. Um, but they, they need outfield depth and they need, they really need a right-handed bat because everywhere on this lineup, you look, they got lefties, they got lefties galore. Like, I feel like no other team in the league has a left-handed hitter because the Reds just have all of them and they have a really tough time with left-handed pitching because of that. The, uh, uh, Rockies received minor league, uh, right-handers case Williams and Noah Davis for the Michael Givens trade back in uh, July. Are you interested in bolstering your lineup depth with a left-handed bat that hits ground balls at a 67% rate, but still bats 286? (laughs) That's an interesting one. I honestly, I really hope that the Reds make a big move for like a right-handed bat, even if they keep Nick Castellanos for whatever reason. And that's the other thing. Like the other thing that really grinds my gears about Nolan Arenado not opting out is that, He had the chance to, and he's not doing it because obviously St. Louis really seems to have a grasp on what they're doing in the future. And I'm pretty sure that it's about a 99.9% chance that Nick Castellanos exercises his opt out. And mostly because I think the Reds uh, view of the future is a little clouded. Clouded views of the future, or at least in this case, you know, different views of the future. But if you, we're a betting man, Jeff. What what would you what would you put on the Reds to to win the World Series the next year? 
I, I put a couple bones on that. I did this past year, and I got some pretty nice odds on it over at our favorite online sports book at betonline.ag. Of course, it's not going to hit, but um, <laughs> I, you know, I'd probably put about twenty or thirty bucks on it next year because I yeah. bet the odds are going to be fantastic, and you can add that money to your wallet if it were to happen. I don't know of the uh, chances of that actually paying out, but <laughs> you can find out at betonline.ag. Go there and set up your profile today. Use the promo code locked on and you'll get a hundred percent more on your initial deposit. They've got great lines when it comes to major league baseball future bets probably won't come out for a few more months on that one, but I'm sure that the reds will have long odds to win the world series. But right now you can also jump in on football betting, whether it be NFL or NCAA and they've got basketball up for NBA. They've got great futures. You can look at win totals. You can check out if you really like the Nuggets and want to see what Jokic is doing. I bet they got some pretty nice win totals there. And then you've got NHL as well. I mean, the abs, the abs, holy crap, the abs. Yep. They are really good at the hockey. They're I've watched a couple hockey. a couple of matches. I'm like, yeah, they, they're fun to watch. Um but yeah, you can check that all out at betonline.ag. Set up your profile today with the promo code locked on. Get 100% more. I said 100% more. You put in 100, they'll give you 100. Buy one, get one free with the promo code locked on when you set up your profile today. Start that bankroll off right and start making some money off your sports knowledge on the only online sports book that I trust. And I'm pretty sure Paul is the Got only to. one that he trusts as well. Yeah. Betonline.ag. They they don't they don't give you any free help though. Um, I will no. say I I have put some bets on the Broncos, some parlays and things out there, and uh, eh, I got to reevaluate uh, my my approach a little bit. I think I think it's funny they send out like a newsletter and and they're like, oh, we're, we're noticing this trend. We're noticing this is a great tip that we want to give you. And I'm like, this seems like a trap. Why That's would <laughs> yeah? Why would the sports book be telling me to take this bet? It's not going to happen. Exactly. <laughs> Well, one thing, like you said, that uh, it's not going to happen, but uh, leads in. We teased it a little bit, and and I got to tell you, I think the Rockies need to go after Nick Castellanos. I think Nick Castellanos would be a really, really interesting piece for this Rockies team. I think they're looking for outfield, like I mentioned. In case you're curious, who that 286 batter, a uh, left-handed batter, uh, who also hits ground balls at a 67 percent uh, rate, which is 12 higher than the next highest person at Eric Hosmer, who is 15% higher than the next person on the list. That's <laughs> Rymel Tapia. I love mm -hmm. Rymel Tapia. I think he brings a lot of energy. He's fun, but 60, I'm not lying, 67% ground ball rate, 50% ground ball rate, at least for the past uh, full seasons. I, I think uh, the 2020 season, he he got a little bit of a benefit of the doubt with uh, sure. it being shorter. But as as much of an X factor as Rymel is, because he hits ground balls through the infield, they're like, that's a single. But no, it turns out to be a double. I, I the Rockies desperately need a another big bat, and I think Cassianos not only fills a you know a need for some for, for an outfield uh, in defense, but it's a big bat, and I think he would love to hit at Coors Field. I just don't know. And Jeff, I'm curious what your thoughts on this. The the Rockies themselves have said that they don't think that they can attract big name free agents, and I just find that very hard to believe for offensive minded players. I think. Castellanos would be super wise to go from the friendly confines in the hitters park of great American small park to Coors field, because you go from not, you know, a, a very big launching pad for homers in great American to the ultimate launching pad for homers in Coors. And he feasted. I mean, there were a lot of people who tried to take spray charts from when he played with the Cubs and they would like, dub them over great American and be like, see this double would turn into a Homer and this triple would turn to like all this other stuff. And they were right. I mean, he had the most homers in his career this year. So I think if I were Castellanos, the Rockies would be one of the first places that I would consider. And not only that, but even from an outside perspective, I think that the Rockies are on the come up a little bit. I don't think that they're looking at, I mean, they don't seem like a team that's about to you know, start over or something like that. In my mind, it just from an outsider's perspective. So I think that that would be a good place for him to go. I, I think that there's been a lot of Reds fans that have speculated in a doom and gloom sense that he would be a Cardinal. And yeah, kind of like you with Arenado and the Dodgers. I don't want to think about uh, Cassianos playing for the Cardinals, but I think that 
the Rockies would be one of the first places on my list if I were him. And I found out that the Reds were not interested in paying me a ton of money, which he's going to get paid because I, I would be surprised if he opts out and the next deal that he signs is less than 20 million AAV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and see the thing that's really interesting. I think with Nick Castellanos is that DH is really interesting because I think if you're the Rockies, you play, you put Castellanos maybe in, in right. You, you got to figure out what you're doing with the, your other infield pieces or your outfield pieces, Rymel Tapia, Jonathan Daza, and Connor Joe. That, I mean, he's really the big X factor of coming on this year of being a player nobody knew anything about, but has just really shined in his small uh, time, just brings a great presence to the plate and good on defense. But if you could put Nick Castellanos, you know, you find him in the outfield. I My, my thought is you put him in right or maybe left, depending on what happens with Tapia. And... Charlie Blackman heads to be in the deep more of a full time DH. I, I think that's a much better call for him because we Charlie Blackman can still swing it. He's he's not swinging it as well, but he's still an effective hitter. But his defense is atrocious. And the Rockies need to get in if they if they can keep Chuck's bat in the lineup and improve the defense. That's a win win I think for the Rockies. And you, and you got to be exploring that option because they do have two highly their number they're basically their best prospects are two outfielders, but. One they just drafted out of high school this year, so he's you know good five you know four or five years out probably, and then another one probably I would say still needs another year and a half. Maybe you see him if the Rockies are in a similar situation this year, end of end of twenty twenty two season. He comes up in September and you know bats around a little bit and they see what they got. But I, I think Nick Castellanos would be a great addition to this Rockies club. I think that he's kind of the he's not the flashiest name, but he's a big enough name that I think people would get excited about. And uh, he can spread his doom and gloom of, of hitting more home runs so more catastrophic events can happen in the world, I guess, which we don't want that to happen. But it's kind of funny. Like, as yeah. dark as it no, is, no, like, yeah. it's it's ridiculous. And I, you have to wonder how many of these are fake. But then you look and you're like, oh, no, there it is. He just hit that home run. And then this just happened. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous. it's so funny how that, how that works out. But, yeah, he um, he would be a heck of an addition. And I, I think that he should be one of the most sought after dudes in free agency this year because I think that he is going to be probably a little bit less costly than some of the other ones out there. And that's only because of the injury that he went through in which he got hit by a pitch and he was out for a while. But before that happened, dude was on track to be an MVP or at least get significant share of the MVP votes in the national league. And then he goes out for a month and people forget about him. And he's still for at least the better part of the season contended for the batting title. I mean, Trey Turner and his whole, whatever he (laughs) just stopped getting out. Uh, So that, that didn't help anything. And then, you look at different ways that he can be effective for different teams next year. It's, it's got to start with a ballpark like Coors field, or if he remains with great American, or maybe if he goes to New York, God help us or something like that. I don't, I don't know, but I think that he is a dude that should be like a day one signing because he is a dude who can bring a huge impact to a lineup. And I tell you what, Paul, I got some more questions for you when it comes to the Rockies, but, We're going to do a little cliffhanger action. We're going to save it for tomorrow. We're going to talk. Yeah, we got a two-part crossover (laughs) for (laughs) Lockdown Reds and Lockdown Rockies. So thank you all so much for watching and listening right here to day one of the Lockdown Reds and Rockies crossover. We'll have day two for you tomorrow. You're not going to want to miss that. And thanks again for making us your first listen. Now, go check out Lockdown MLB. Sully's got a look at the playoffs and everything that's going on there. He covers it from all angles. There's no way that it was baseball past and present than Sully does. Go check him out at Lockdown MLB. But as for Paul and myself, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.